Welcome to the ancient megalithic site Brujum El Hiri. Brujum El Hiri, located in the central Golan Heights, is one of the largest megalithic monuments in the Near East. Mainstream archaeology believes that the site was constructed during the Late Bronze Age. There is no consensus among archaeologists for what purpose the site was used. Our method provides a working method to reverse engineer the most probable use of ancient sites. Brujum El Hiri consists of over 40,000 rocks, which are arranged in concentric circles. The site was officially discovered some 50 years ago. It has been excavated by several expeditions over the last decades. But what is there to excavate? Is always our first question, when a site is only some 5,000 years old. The Golan Heights is a typical Mediterranean climate, hence there is not much new soil added to the top layers. That means that if something must be excavated, in such an environment, it is very likely of extreme antiquity. An argument against extreme antiquity could be that a flood of some kind covered the site, hence it had to excavate it. With this argument an age of around 5,000 years could be comfortably maintained. However, at a height of over 500 meters 1, feet are floods extremely unlikely. The only parameter, that answers all questions, in the simplest way is, extreme antiquity. Our next question could be, how is Rujum El Hiri dated? How did the archaeologists come to the conclusion that the site is around 5,000 years old? The site is dated based on very scanty archaeological evidence found between the rocks. However, there is not a shred of evidence that this material came from the earliest builders. It is just a sample. New organic material can always slip in between rocks. If the site was built by early Homo sapiens, there would be no organic material to be dated. All organic materials that are older than 60,000 years, show, zero, on the displays of the accelerator mass spectrometry. Only the materials that give results are associated with the site's age, and therefore, this type of dating results in an unrealistic age. We have examined the site with our method. Our database consists of around 1,000 ancient monuments around the world. Mathematical examination of the orientation of all these separate monuments, resulted in the locations of four former geographic poles over a period of around 350,000 years. Rujum El Hiri is no part of our database. That makes an investigation to this site the more interesting. The first thing we always do first, is to look for maps of an ancient site. Google Earth is a powerful tool for this. But that alone is not enough. We found several maps of Rujum El Hiri, and examined them all. Something important first. And this might be difficult to understand for some. So, please pay attention. The location of Rujum El Hiri, and that of the region, Egypt, Israel, Syria, in general, has one specific property when it comes to crustal deformations. The distances between ancient monuments and the path of the pole, over the so-called 47.1 west area, hardly changes. What does this mean? This means that crustal deformations had not much effect on the latitudes of this region, and thus, not much effect on solstices and climate. In contrast to the Sahara, for example, that endured massive latitudinal changes, and the resulting climatic changes. This is the reason that the Sahara was once green. Of course, things changed also for the Near East region over the last half million years. But the changes were predominantly orientational, and not latitudinal. This was probably a relative good climate to be during cataclysms. This might be one of the reasons why this region was a sort of Garden of Eden. That means that we do not have to look for significant solstice changes only for orientational changes of the solstices. That is what we have to look for in Rujum El Hiri. And that is what we did. The solstice angle of the region of Rujum El Hiri is around 28.0 degrees. So, the total angle between summer and winter solstice is around 56.0 degrees. And this value did not change significantly of the course of the five geographic poles. 
The variation is within the range of only plus minus 1.8 degrees. And this value includes variations like distance to the path of the pole. But also variations like the changing tilt of the spin axis. Earth's tilt of the spin axis has also influence on the solstices. The first typical feature that drew our attention are the two entrances. They are marked with the yellow boxes. They are arranged perpendicular to each other. That means that this could be an ancient cardinal system. And indeed, the angle of minus 33 under which they are oriented correlates with one of the ancient poles, pole 4. The probability that this arrangement is meant to be so is around 80%. We found perfect fitting ancient sunset solstices of Pole 4 in the outer circle. This makes the probability that Rujum el Hiri is as ancient as Pole 4, around 255,000 years plus or minus 15,000 years, is over 95%. However, there are many more radial markers to be found in this site. That is why we suspect that Rujum el Hiri was used over a much longer time frame than only during Pole 4. It was also in use during Pole 1. We can see the arrangements for solstices at two different observation positions on the center plateau. Pole 1, is the period between today and 26,000 years ago. The orange spot marks the observation point for sunrise. And the red spot marks the observation point for sunset. We will see that over the course of the different poles most solstices are still present in the structure. The observation points are all within the circular structure. There are still clear solstice arrangements visible for pole 2. For pole 3. For pole 4, like already shown before. And for pole 5, we have correlated most of the marking points of Rujum el Hiri with the poles 1 to 5. We even found one observation marker for pole 6. The plateau is always the main observation area for ancient solstices. However, the exact spot might vary a bit. Rujum el Hiri is no part of our data set. But it is clear that the path of the pole is visible also in this ancient structure. The probability that we are correct in our conclusions is close to 100%. Give a thumbs up if you like this video. Please share it with your friends and followers, and let us know what you think below in the comment section. One last thing. Our work is difficult, and because we tread uncharted territory, our progress is as steady but slow. We are not here to entertain you with superficial daily videos. We are here to inform you, and to pave the way to new methods of researching our ancient history. Everything we do takes a lot of time. That is why we need your support on Patreon. Thank you for watching.